The sterile white walls of the clinic seemed to close in on Sarah and Mark as they sat in the doctor's office. Dr. Elizabeth Crane, a middle-aged woman with kind eyes behind her glasses, handed them a sealed envelope. The tension in the room was palpable. This contains the results of the DNA test, Dr. Crane said gently. If you have any questions after reading it, I'll be here to help. Sarah squeezed Mark's hand, her heart pounding. This test had been Mark's idea, driven by his increasing jealousy and paranoia. He had insisted on the test, convinced that it would put his mind at ease. She never anticipated any complications. Mark's hands trembled as he tore open the envelope. He pulled out the papers inside and scanned them quickly, his brow furrowed in confusion. I, I don't understand this, he said, his voice shaky. He looked up at Dr. Crane, desperation in his eyes. Can you explain this to us? Dr. Crane took the papers from Mark and glanced over them. She sighed, her expression becoming serious. The results indicate that you are not the biological father of Emily. The words hung in the air like a thunderclap. Sarah's eyes widened in disbelief. That's impossible, she whispered, shaking her head. There must be a mistake. Mark's face turned ashen, his grip on Sarah's hand tightening painfully. What do you mean? This has to be wrong, he said, his voice trembling with a mix of anger and fear. Dr. Crane sighed softly and said with as much kindness as she could muster, I know this is hard to accept, but the tests are conclusive. These are the results. Mark stood up abruptly, releasing Sarah's hand. This can't be happening, he muttered, pacing the small office. How could this happen, Sarah? Sarah felt tears welling up in her eyes. I don't know, Mark. I swear, I have no idea. Mark's face twisted with rage and pain. I knew it, he spat out, glaring at Sarah. I knew something was wrong. You've been cheating on me, haven't you? No, Mark, I haven't, Sarah cried, reaching out to him. I don't know how this happened, but I swear I've never been unfaithful. Mark pulled away from her, his eyes cold and distant. I can't believe you, he said, his voice breaking. I can't even look at you right now. Without another word, he stormed out of the office, leaving Sarah behind with tears streaming down her face. Sarah Thompson had always been known for her striking beauty. With her flowing auburn hair, sparkling green eyes, and a smile that could light up a room, she attracted attention wherever she went. But behind that beautiful facade was a woman who had been through a lot. Years ago, Sarah had been in a relationship with Jake, a man whose jealousy knew no bounds. Jake's constant accusations and controlling behaviour had made Sarah's life miserable. She lived in a state of constant fear and anxiety, always trying to prove her loyalty and innocence. It was a relief when she finally found the courage to leave him. It was not long after her breakup with Jake that she met Mark. They crossed paths at a friend's party. Mark was different, kind, gentle, and genuinely interested in her well-being. He listened to her stories, laughed at her jokes, and most importantly, he never showed a hint of the jealousy that had tormented her with Jake. Mark's promise to be different won Sarah over. He said, I'll never be like him, Sarah. You deserve to be trusted and loved without reservations. His words were a soothing balm to her wounded heart. They fell in love quickly, and within a year Mark proposed. Their wedding was a small, intimate affair filled with close friends and family. However, not everyone was as thrilled about their union. Mark's mother, Mrs. Thompson, had always been sceptical of Sarah. She questioned Sarah's intentions and background, making subtle comments that hinted at her disapproval. Mark reassured Sarah that his mother's opinion didn't matter, but the seeds of doubt had already been planted. The early years of their marriage were blissful. Sarah cherished every moment believing she had finally found the love and trust she longed for. Mark was attentive, loving, and supportive. But as time went on, subtle changes began to creep into their relationship. Mark became increasingly uncomfortable with the attention Sarah received from other men. Harmless compliments and innocent interactions began to bother him. Sarah noticed the shift and tried to address it. Mark, 
You promised me you wouldn't be like Jake, she reminded him gently one evening. I know, Sarah, I'm sorry, he said, pulling her into a hug. I'm just, I love you so much. I don't want to lose you. Mark's jealousy had always been there, a subtle undercurrent in their relationship, but it had never been a significant issue. Sarah had always tried to be patient and understanding, believing it was just a phase. However, one day, an incident occurred that marked the beginning of a more profound change in Mark. It started innocuously enough. Sarah had been working late, trying to meet a tight deadline for a project at the marketing firm where she worked. When she finally arrived home, exhausted but satisfied with her progress, she found Mark sitting in the living room, his face illuminated by the flickering light of the television. Hey, I'm home, Sarah said with a tired smile, setting her bag down and walking over to kiss him on the cheek. Mark didn't respond immediately. He turned off the TV and looked up at her, his expression hard to read. Late night, huh? He said finally, his tone neutral. Yeah, we had a big project due. I'm sorry I didn't call. I lost track of time, Sarah explained, sitting down beside him. Mark's eyes narrowed slightly. You were with him, weren't you? Sarah frowned in confusion. With who? Your colleague David, Mark replied, his voice tinged with suspicion. I saw the way he looks at you, Sarah. Don't think I haven't noticed. Sarah sighed, trying to keep her frustration in check. Mark, David is just a colleague. We were all working together to finish the project. There's nothing more to it. But Mark's suspicions didn't ease. You expect me to believe that? I've seen the way he flirts with you. Mark, you're overreacting, Sarah said gently. There's nothing going on between me and David. I love you, and only you. Mark stood up, pacing the room. I don't know if I can believe that anymore, Sarah. Everywhere we go, men look at you. They flirt with you, and you let them. Sarah felt a pang of hurt. I don't let them. I can't control how people act, but I always make it clear that I'm married. Mark shook his head, his face contorted with anger and frustration. You need to set boundaries, Sarah. You need to show them that you're not available. Sarah stood up, her own frustration boiling over. I do set boundaries, Mark, but I can't help it if people misinterpret friendliness for something more. You need to trust me. Mark stopped pacing and looked at her, his eyes filled with a mix of pain and anger. Maybe I would if you gave me a reason to. That night marked a turning point. Mark's jealousy, once a mere undercurrent, began to dominate their interactions. He questioned Sarah's every move, scrutinised her relationships with male colleagues, and became increasingly possessive. One evening, a few weeks after the late-night work incident, Sarah decided to attend a networking event hosted by her company. She knew it was important for her career, but she also knew how Mark would react. She decided to talk to him about it. Mark, there's a networking event next week. I think it's important for my career to attend, Sarah said, trying to keep her tone light and casual. Mark's eyes flashed with anger. So you can spend more time with David? Sarah sighed feeling the weight of his distrust. Mark, this isn't about David. It's about my career. I need to make connections and build relationships in the industry. Mark's jaw tightened. I don't like it. I don't like the idea of you being around all those men. Mark, you have to trust me, Sarah pleaded. I've never given you a reason not to. Despite his growing jealousy, Mark eventually agreed to let Sarah attend the networking event. He knew how important her career was to her, and he didn't want to be the one holding her back. The event went smoothly, and Sarah returned home late that night, relieved that Mark had trusted her enough to go. The next few months were relatively calm. Mark still had his moments of insecurity, but they managed to work through them. Then, one evening, Sarah came home with news that changed everything. Mark, I have something to tell you, she said, her eyes shining with excitement. Mark looked up from the book he was reading. What is it, honey? I'm pregnant, Sarah announced, her voice trembling with joy. For a moment, Mark just stared at her, processing the information. Then, a wide grin spread across his face, 
and he jumped up to embrace her. That's amazing, Sarah. We're going to have a baby. The months that followed were filled with preparations and excitement. Mark attended every doctor's appointment, read every book on parenting he could find, and painted the nursery in soft pastel colours. His jealousy seemed to fade away, replaced by an overwhelming sense of love and protectiveness for their unborn child. When the day finally came, and Sarah gave birth to a beautiful baby girl, Mark was beside himself with happiness. He held his daughter for the first time, staring down at her tiny face with tears in his eyes. She's perfect, Sarah, he whispered, his voice choked with emotion. I've never felt this kind of love in my entire life. I'm ready to do anything to love her, to protect her, to be by her side. Sarah watched them with a smile, her heart swelling with love for both of them. For a while, everything was perfect. They named their daughter Emily, and their days were filled with the joys and challenges of parenthood. Mark was a doting father, always eager to spend time with Emily. He would sing to her, read her bedtime stories, and rock her to sleep in his arms. The bond between them was undeniable, and it brought a new depth to their relationship. But as Emily grew, the old insecurities began to creep back into Mark's mind. He would watch Sarah closely, scrutinising her interactions with other men, even though she had given him no reason to doubt her. The jealousy, that had once been a mere undercurrent, now threatened to resurface, fueled by the deep love he had for his daughter. One evening, when Emily was about twelve months old, Mark came home from work in a foul mood. He had seen Sarah talking to someone at the grocery store and the sight had ignited a familiar rage within him. Who was that man you were talking to today? He demanded as soon as he walked through the door. Sarah looked up, startled by his tone. What are you talking about, Mark? At the grocery store, I saw you talking to some guy, Mark snapped. Sarah sighed, trying to stay calm. That was just a colleague from work. We ran into each other while shopping. It was nothing. Nothing? It didn't look like nothing to me, Mark muttered, his eyes dark with suspicion. Mark, please, you're overreacting, Sarah said, her voice gentle but firm. I love you, and only you. You have to trust me. But Mark's jealousy had taken root once more, and it was growing like a cancer, poisoning their relationship. The tension between them grew, and the foundation of their marriage began to show signs of strain. Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that their love was slipping away, one jealous accusation at a time. Mark tried his best to suppress his jealousy, knowing it was harming his relationship with Sarah. He poured his energy into spending more time with Emily, cherishing every moment with her. He read her stories, took her for walks in the park, and marvelled at her every milestone. Emily, sensing her father's deep love, did her best to make him smile and feel appreciated. Despite his efforts, Mark couldn't fully shake his insecurities. Then, one day at work, a colleague shared a story that reignited his fears. They were discussing family over lunch when the topic of paternity came up. Did you hear about Jim and his wife? They did a DNA test, and it turned out their kid wasn't his, one colleague said, shaking his head. Can you imagine? That kind of betrayal? Mark's stomach churned at the story. He tried to push it out of his mind but the seed of doubt had been planted. A few days later, Mark was on his way home when he decided to stop by a local cafe to grab a coffee. As he approached the entrance, he saw Sarah sitting at a table inside. She was talking to a man who was holding Emily. Mark's heart pounded in his chest and anger surged through him. Without thinking, he stormed into the cafe. What the hell is going on here? He demanded, causing heads to turn. Sarah looked up, startled. Mark. Calm down, this is just... Just what? Mark interrupted, his voice rising. Just you having coffee with some guy while he holds our baby. The man quickly handed Emily back to Sarah and stood up. I think I should go, he said, backing away. Mark, please, let me explain, Sarah pleaded, holding Emily close. But Mark was too furious to listen. I can't believe you, Sarah. I thought you were different. How could you do this to me? he shouted before storming out of the cafe. Sarah hurriedly paid the bill and rushed home, her heart heavy with fear and frustration. When she arrived, she found Mark pacing in the living room, his face a mask of anger and hurt. 
Mark, please, let me explain, she said, tears streaming down her face. That man is just... I don't want to hear it, Mark snapped. I'm done with your excuses, Sarah. But Mark... No, Mark shouted, cutting her off. I'm tired of wondering if Emily is really mine. I'm tired of these doubts eating away at me. There's only one way to solve this. We're doing a DNA test, and we're doing it now. Sarah stared at him, stunned. A DNA test? Yes, Mark said his voice trembling with emotion. We do the test, and we get the truth. Then I'll know once and for all. Sarah nodded, seeing no other way to calm his fears. Okay, Mark, we'll do the test. But you have to trust me when I say that I love you, and I've never been unfaithful. Mark didn't respond, his mind too consumed by the swirling doubts. He simply nodded, his expression unreadable. They made the arrangements for the DNA test, each silently hoping that it would bring the clarity and peace their relationship desperately needed. But as they waited for the results, the tension between them only grew and the foundation of their marriage continued to crack under the weight of suspicion and mistrust. The results indicated that Mark is not the biological father of Emily, Dr. Craner confirmed, her voice gently but firm. Without another word, he stormed out of the office, leaving Sarah behind devastated and alone. Mark drove to his mother's house, his mind racing with anger and betrayal. His father had passed away years ago, leaving him and his mother to navigate life on their own. When he arrived, his mother, Mrs. Thompson, was sitting in the living room knitting. Mark, what's wrong? she asked, noticing his distressed state. It's Sarah, he replied, his voice shaking. The DNA test came back. Emily isn't mine. Mrs. Thompson's eyes narrowed. I knew that woman was trouble from the start. You need to divorce her, Mark. Don't give her a penny. We bought the house together, Mark said, running his hands through his hair. But I paid off the mortgage with the money from that big deal last year. Then you keep the house, his mother said firmly. She doesn't deserve anything from you. Make sure you get a good lawyer. Mark nodded, feeling a grim resolve settle over him. You're right, Mom. I'll start the process tomorrow. Meanwhile, Sarah was desperate to make Mark understand that there had to be a mistake. She called him repeatedly, but he refused to answer. Finally, she left a voicemail, her voice choked with emotion. Mark, honey, I know you're upset and I am too. We need to talk about this and figure out what's going on. Could we please do another test? I'm sure there's an explanation and we can get through this together. But there was no response. As she sat alone in their now empty home, Sarah suddenly remembered the man from the cafe. He had approached her, wanting to talk about Emily. He had something important to reveal. Could he hold the key to this nightmare? With renewed determination, Sarah searched for his contact information. She found his business card tucked away in her purse. Taking a deep breath, she dialed his number. Hello, this is Sarah Thompson, she said when he answered. We met at the cafe a while ago. You mentioned you had something to tell me about my baby. Can we meet? The man's voice was calm but urgent. Yes, Mrs. Thompson. I've been trying to reach you. It's important that we talk. How soon can you meet? Tomorrow morning, Sarah replied, her heart pounding. Please, I need to understand what's going on. They arranged to meet at a quiet park nearby. As Sarah hung up the phone, she felt a glimmer of hope amidst the darkness. Maybe, just maybe, this man could provide the answers she desperately needed. The next morning, Sarah arrived at the park early, anxiously scanning the area for the man from the cafe. Her heart pounded with a mix of hope and fear as she cradled Emily in her arms. Soon, she spotted him walking toward her, a serious expression on his face. Mrs. Thompson? he greeted her, extending a hand. Thank you for meeting me. I'm Robert Hayes. Sarah shook his hand, trying to steady her nerves. Please, call me Sarah. What is this all about? Robert took a deep breath. I'm a private detective. I was hired by someone to investigate a matter involving your baby, Emily. I can't reveal my client's identity yet, but I assure you, it's important. Sarah's mind raced with confusion and fear. Investigate? What are you talking about? How does this involve Emily? I've never... 
Mark is the only man I've ever been with. Robert looked around to ensure they had privacy, then spoke in a low voice. My client has reason to believe there may have been a mix-up at the hospital where Emily was born. To confirm this, we need to conduct a DNA test between your baby and my client. Sarah felt a wave of shock and disbelief wash over her. A mix-up? How is that possible? Robert nodded sympathetically. I understand this is difficult to hear, but my client is convinced there was a mistake and we need to verify it. I know it's a lot to ask, but will you agree to the test? Sarah looked down at Emily, her heart heavy with the weight of the situation. The confusion and fear threatened to overwhelm her, but she knew she had to fight for the truth. She had to clear her name. With a quiet determination, she said, Okay, I'll agree to the test. I need answers. Robert nodded reassuringly. Thank you, Sarah. I'll arrange everything. We'll meet at the clinic tomorrow morning. The next day, Sarah arrived at the clinic with Emily, her heart a mix of dread and resolve. Robert was already there, accompanied by a man who seemed equally anxious. Robert introduced him vaguely as his client, keeping his identity confidential. This is Emily's mother, Robert said, and the man nodded, his eyes mirroring Sarah's desperation. Seeing the pain in his eyes, Sarah felt a pang of empathy. They were both caught in a storm of uncertainty, both desperately seeking answers. The clinic staff efficiently performed the DNA test, collecting samples from both babies and the man. Sarah held Emily close, trying to maintain her composure as they waited for the results. The wait felt agonizingly long, but finally, Robert broke the silence. We should have the results in a few days. I know this is difficult, but thank you for your cooperation. Sarah nodded, her mind racing with a torrent of emotions. I just want to know the truth, she whispered. Robert placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder. We will find it, Sarah. I promise. As Sarah left the clinic, a glimmer of hope flickered within her despite the turmoil. Though her heart ached with confusion, the possibility of answers gave her strength. She clung to the belief that the truth was out there, waiting to be revealed, no matter the cost. Meanwhile, Mark sat in his lawyer's office, the decision to divorce Sarah weighing heavily on him. His mother's harsh words, urging him to cut ties and secure their home, echoed in his mind. The sting of betrayal was too deep, and despite the love he once felt for Sarah, he saw no path forward together. Returning home that evening, Sarah was met with the sight of Mark packing his belongings. Her heart sank as the reality of his actions hit her. Mark, please, she pleaded, her voice trembling. Can we talk? There's nothing left to say, Sarah, Mark responded coldly. I've made my decision. I'm filing for divorce. Tears welled in Sarah's eyes. Mark, please, just give me a little more time. I'll have answers soon. Mark shook his head resolutely. I already know the truth. I can't live with this betrayal. I'm keeping the house, and that's final. Sarah's shoulders slumped in defeat. The house, once a symbol of their shared love and future, now held no value for her. Her only focus was uncovering the truth about Emily. Fine, she replied quietly. You can have the house. All I want is to understand what happened to our baby. Several days later, a call from Robert Hayes brought both dread and anticipation. The DNA test results are in, he informed her. Could you meet us at the clinic? Sarah's heart raced as she agreed to the meeting. Arriving at the clinic, she was met by Robert and his client, a tall, distinguished man named John Turner, who exuded wealth and authority. Sarah, this is John Turner, Robert introduced. He's the one who hired me. John extended his hand. Mrs. Thompson, thank you for agreeing to the test. I apologize for all the confusion and pain this has caused. Sarah shook his hand, struggling to compose herself. I just want to know the truth. Robert led them into the clinic, where the doctor awaited them with a folder in hand. John Turner took a deep breath and asked, Doctor, could you please share the test results? The doctor opened the folder and looked at them solemnly. 
the DNA test results confirm that John Turner is indeed the biological father of Emily. Sarah's world spun, confusion mingled with a strange sense of understanding. That explains why the DNA test with Mark didn't match, she murmured, almost to herself. John sensing her shock and wanting to provide the complete story said, Sarah, there's more you need to know. Sarah looked at him, her heart pounding. What is it? However, seeing the overwhelming emotions on Sarah's face, John realized this wasn't the right moment to burden her further. Sarah, he began gently. I'm so sorry. This is a lot to take in. Can we meet tomorrow and talk more about it? It's best if you hear the rest later. For now, just know that I understand this is overwhelming. Sarah nodded numbly, clutching Emily close. I need some time to process this, she said softly. The next morning, Sarah met John at a quiet cafe. She was exhausted, her mind still reeling from the previous day's revelations. She held Emily close, finding comfort in her daughter's presence. John was already seated at a corner table, looking pensive and troubled. Good morning, Sarah. John greeted her, standing up as she approached. Thank you for coming. Good morning, Sarah replied, taking a seat. She took a deep breath, steeling herself for whatever was to come. John, please, I need to know. Tell me about your daughter. Is she mine? John sighed heavily, sadness etched into his features. Sarah, there's something you need to understand about Grace. She was a wonderful child, full of life and energy, but she was ill. Sarah's heart tightened. Ill? I'm so sorry to hear that. Is she... is she okay now? John took a deep breath, struggling to find the words. Grace had a serious medical condition. We needed to do a DNA test to find a compatible bone marrow donor. That's when we discovered that I wasn't her biological father. Sarah gasped, her eyes widening in shock. Oh my God. So that's how you found out. John nodded slowly. Yes, it was a devastating discovery. But there's more, Sarah. Grace? She didn't survive. She passed away a month ago. The weight of his words hit Sarah like a ton of bricks. Tears streamed down her face as she clutched Emily even tighter. No. Not Grace, she whispered, her voice breaking with sorrow. John's eyes glistened with unshed tears as he spoke. I'm so sorry, Sarah. This has been incredibly hard for all of us, but I needed to find out the truth. That's why I hired Robert to investigate. My wife died giving birth to our daughter Grace, or rather, your daughter Emily. Losing my wife was almost more than I could bear. And now to learn that the child I raised as my own was not mine? His voice trailed off, the pain evident in his expression. Sarah's heart ached in response to his raw grief. The realization that his loss was twofold, his wife and the daughter he believed was his, struck her deeply. Tears welled up in her own eyes as she whispered, I feel like I've lost her too. It's as if a part of me is missing. I understand, Sarah. It's okay to feel this way. I know this is a shock, and I can't imagine how difficult it must be to process. But I want you to know that I'm here for you, for whatever you need. We'll figure this out together, one step at a time. Sarah cried uncontrollably, the reality of the situation crashing down on her. John moved closer, offering her a comforting embrace. We'll get through this together, Sarah. We have to be strong for Emily. Sarah nodded through her tears, finding some solace in John's support. Thank you, John. I just... I need time. Take all the time you need. John said softly. We'll figure this out, step by step. Sarah went home, her mind a whirlwind of emotions. The revelation that Emily was not biologically Mark's, but John's, left her reeling. She couldn't stop thinking about what this meant for Emily's future and her own. Grace's death had changed something in her. It was as if the world had been flipped upside down and she was struggling to find her footing. As she entered the house, she found Mark waiting for her, his face set in a determined expression. He was holding a stack of papers. Sarah, I need you to sign these divorce papers now, he demanded, 
his voice cold and insistent. Sarah, overwhelmed by grief and shock, took the papers without a word. The house, the divorce, nothing mattered anymore compared to the gaping hole Grace's absence had left in her heart. She signed them with trembling hands and handed them back to Mark. Goodbye, Mark, she said quietly, feeling a hollow emptiness inside. Mark looked at her, momentarily confused by her lack of resistance. That's it? he asked, almost incredulously. Sarah nodded, her eyes devoid of emotion. Yes, that's it. You can keep the house. I don't care anymore. Mark, taken aback by her calm acceptance, felt a surge of triumph. Fine, I'm glad you finally see reason, he said, taking the papers and leaving without another word. The following days were a blur of grief and confusion for Sarah. She couldn't stop thinking about Grace and the life they had lost. She felt an unfillable void, a sense that something precious had been taken from her. John, sensing her need for support, called frequently, offering comfort and understanding. Sarah, how are you holding up? John asked gently during one of their calls. It's hard, Sarah admitted, her voice trembling. I can't stop thinking about Grace, and I'm so scared of losing Emily. Sarah, I understand your fear, John said softly. But I promise you, I'm not here to take Emily away from you. I just want to be a part of her life. We need to find a way to make this work for all of us. Sarah sighed, feeling a glimmer of hope through her sorrow. I want what's best for Emily too. She means everything to me. Let's meet and talk this through, John suggested. We need to find a solution that ensures Emily feels loved and secure, surrounded by both of us. They agreed to meet at a nearby park, a neutral place where they could discuss their future without the weight of their recent past bearing down on them. When they met, Emily played on the swings while Sarah and John sat on a bench, their faces solemn but determined. Sarah, I want you to know that I'm here for you both, John began. I don't want to disrupt Emily's life. I just want to be there for her as her father. Sarah nodded, her eyes filled with tears. I appreciate that, John. I want to keep Emily with me, but I also understand that she deserves to know you. John reached out and took her hand gently. We can do this, Sarah. We can find a way to co-parent that works for all of us. I'm willing to support you in any way I can. They spent the afternoon discussing various possibilities, from shared custody arrangements to regular visitation schedules. Through it all, John made sure Sarah knew that his intentions were genuine, that he truly wanted what was best for Emily. Over time, their meetings became more frequent. They started seeing each other more regularly, finding a rhythm that worked for them. Slowly, a sense of mutual respect and understanding began to grow. John's presence became a reassuring constant in Emily's life, and Sarah found herself relying on his support more and more. One evening, as they sat together watching Emily play, John turned to Sarah with a warm smile. We've come a long way, haven't we? Sarah nodded, a soft smile on her lips. Yes, we have. I couldn't have done this without you, John. And I wouldn't have found Emily without you, John replied. We're in this together for her. As they watched Emily's laughter fill the air, Sarah felt a sense of peace she hadn't felt in a long time. Despite the pain and loss, they were building a new life, one filled with hope and love for their daughter. And in that moment, Sarah knew that together, they could face whatever the future held. As the weeks turned into months, John and Sarah continued to navigate their new reality, focusing on providing the best life for Emily. Their frequent meetings and shared responsibility created a strong bond between them. John saw more of Sarah's true self, her kindness, strength and unwavering love for Emily. He found himself drawn to her, not just as the mother of his child, but as a remarkable woman. Sarah, on the other hand, appreciated the support and stability John brought into her life. She had never experienced such genuine care from a man before but she believed John's attentiveness was solely for Emily's sake, and she convinced herself that he had no romantic interest in her. One sunny afternoon, they decided to take Emily to the zoo. As they walked through the exhibits, laughing and sharing stories, John couldn't help but feel his heart swell with affection for Sarah. He watched her interact with Emily, 
and felt a profound sense of happiness and contentment. After Emily fell asleep in her stroller, they found a quiet bench under the shade of a large oak tree. Sarah looked at John and smiled. Thank you for today, John. Emily had a wonderful time. I'm glad, John replied, his eyes fixed on her. Sarah, there's something I've been meaning to tell you. Sarah's smile faded slightly, replaced by curiosity and a hint of apprehension. What is it, John? John took a deep breath, gathering his courage. Sarah, over the past few months, I've gotten to know you better. I've seen your kindness, your strength, and your incredible love for Emily. And I've realized that I have feelings for you. Sarah's eyes widened in shock. John, I, I thought you were just here for Emily. John shook his head, his gaze steady. At first, yes, but the more time I spent with you, the more I realized how special you are. I'm not just here for Emily. I'm here because I care about you too. Tears welled up in Sarah's eyes, a mix of confusion and hope. I never thought, I mean, I didn't think you saw me that way. John reached out and gently took her hand. I do, Sarah. I care about you deeply. I understand if you need time to process this, but I couldn't keep my feelings to myself any longer. Sarah looked into John's eyes and saw the sincerity and warmth there. She felt a rush of emotions, fear, hope, and an unexpected joy. John, you've been such a support to me and Emily. I never imagined finding someone who truly cares for us both. John smiled softly. You don't have to imagine anymore. I'm here, and I want to be with you, if you'll have me. Sarah felt overwhelmed by the revelation. She never thought of John that way, but suddenly it made sense why she always wanted to see him. Still, she couldn't reply right away. John, this is a lot to take in. I need some time to think. John nodded, understanding. Take all the time you need, Sarah. I'll be here. A week later, Sarah and John decided to take Emily to a nearby park. They were enjoying a pleasant afternoon when Sarah noticed Mark walking toward them. His face twisted with anger as he saw them together. Sarah, Mark spat out as he approached. I knew it. I knew you were cheating on me. You knew Emily wasn't mine. Sarah flinched at his harsh words, feeling a mix of fear and shame. Mark, please. This isn't the time or place. But Mark ignored her, his voice rising. You think you can just move on and play happy family with him? You're pathetic. Before Sarah could respond, John stepped in. Mark, this isn't necessary. Please calm down. Mark sneered at John. You think you're better than me? You're just a replacement. Don't think for a second you can take my place. John remained calm, his voice steady. I'm not trying to take your place, Mark. I'm just here to support Sarah and Emily. Let's not make a scene. Mark glared at them one last time before storming off, muttering curses under his breath. Sarah watched him leave, feeling a mix of relief and sadness. John turned to her, his expression gentle. Are you okay? Sarah nodded, tears in her eyes. Thank you, John. You handled that so well. I don't know what I would have done without you. John smiled reassuringly. I'll always be here for you, Sarah. In that moment, Sarah realized just how different John was from any man she had ever known. Where others showed jealousy and possessiveness, John showed support and understanding. His calm demeanor and unwavering support touched her deeply. As they continued their walk, Sarah felt a growing sense of admiration and affection for John. She knew he was different and she knew she could trust him. That evening, as they sat together watching Emily play, Sarah turned to John with a soft smile. John, I've been thinking, she began, her voice filled with emotion. I realized that I have feelings for you too. I was just too scared to admit it. John's eyes lit up with hope and joy. Sarah, you have no idea how happy that makes me. Sarah reached out and took his hand. Let's take this one step at a time, together. John squeezed her hand gently. Together, we will. The months that followed were filled with joy and new beginnings for Sarah, John and Emily.
they navigated their relationship with care, allowing their bond to grow naturally. John's unwavering support and genuine love for both Sarah and Emily solidified their family unit. One sunny afternoon, as they strolled through the park, John turned to Sarah with a twinkle in his eye. Sarah, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Sarah looked up at him, curiosity in her eyes. What is it, John? John took a deep breath and got down on one knee, pulling out a small velvet box. Sarah, you've brought so much joy and love into my life. I can't imagine a future without you. Will you marry me? Tears of happiness welled up in Sarah's eyes as she nodded. Yes, John, I will marry you. Emily clapped her hands in delight, and the three of them shared a heartfelt embrace. The months of uncertainty and heartache had led them to this beautiful moment, and they knew they were meant to be together. The wedding was a small, intimate affair, attended by close friends and family. Sarah wore a simple, elegant dress, and John looked dashing in his suit. As they exchanged vows, their eyes filled with love and promise. They knew they were starting a new chapter together. After the ceremony, John led Sarah and Emily to a sleek black car waiting outside. I have a surprise for you, he said with a smile. Sarah raised an eyebrow, intrigued. What kind of surprise? You'll see, John replied, his eyes twinkling with excitement. As they drove through the countryside, Sarah admired the beautiful scenery, her heart filled with happiness. Finally, they pulled up to a magnificent mansion, its grandeur taking her breath away. John, what is this place? Sarah asked, her voice filled with awe. This is our home, John said, beaming. I wanted to wait until the right moment to show you. Welcome to our new beginning. Sarah was stunned as she looked at the mansion, realising just how much her life had changed. She turned to John, tears of joy streaming down her face. It's perfect, John. Thank you. John wrapped his arms around her and Emily, his heart full of love. No, thank you, Sarah, for making my life complete. As they stood together in front of their new home, Sarah knew that their journey had been worth every challenge. They had found love, happiness, and a sense of belonging. With Emily by their side, they were ready to embrace the future, filled with hope and endless possibilities. And so, with their hearts intertwined and their love stronger than ever, Sarah, John and Emily began their happily ever after, cherishing each moment and looking forward to the beautiful life they would share. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this journey with Sarah, John and Emily, don't forget to hit that subscribe tosh button for more heartwarming stories. Share this video with your friends and family and leave a key comment below to let us know your thoughts. Your support means the world to us and helps us bring more inspiring content to you. Thank you for being part of our community.